Okay, now that we have this dismantled on each end there's going to be three Phillips screws that hold the bearing retainer. I'm going to go ahead and just take all of those out. There's another one. And there are three on each side. Flip it over. Do the same thing here. And once you get these out, the whole thing, the whole assembly, shaft, bearings, retainers, and all, should just lift out the top, like so. So what I'm going to do here is similar to the other procedure. I'm going to chuck it up in the lathe. I'm going to go ahead and turn across this and flatten this area out. What I will have to do on this one is get this one cap off here. I haven't determined how to do that yet because I just took it apart. So I can hold it on centers on both sides and I'll drive it with a dog like I did on the other video. And that will allow me to turn this concentric to this shaft. And once I get that accomplished, I'm going to go ahead and put it back together and check my tracking again. And that will tell me if I need to put a crown on this front. Uh, I was able to track it, but again, it was very fickle. You know, you turn it just a little bit, it runs to one side. You back it off, it goes way over to the other side. And that's why I think there needs to be a crown on this front either of you. So with that being said, I'm going to figure out how to get this particular bearing out of this retainer. And then we'll move on. Okay, well I couldn't really find any good way to get this retaining ring off the end. Uh, so what I ended up doing was simply just taking a dead blow hammer and coming down this way and striking it around its periphery. And I was eventually able to knock it off. So that will allow me now to put my center on this end as well as the other end and turn it with a dog in the lathe and true up this wheel. Now I'm not going to show that operation because it's in essence exactly what we have seen before so I'm going to turn this real quick and then I'll get back and see what's going on. Okay I wanted to do a quick shot here. Uh, I put the pulley back on after I've turned it flat and I still had a big issue with trying to track so I'm going to make an angular crown on this idler pulley here and if you can see I've made two pencil marks here and here and I have basically cut the width or the length of the pulley into thirds and I'm going to take a taper from here out making it smaller on this OD I'm going to turn it around and make the same cut on the other side, making it smaller on this OD. Now I've set the lathe, if I can get a shot here. Uh, the compound rest here has been set offset right now just a half a degree. And what I'm going to do is start my cut right at that pencil mark. So I'm just going to come in and find it. I'm going to turn the lathe on, come in, touch off, marking my zero, and then I'm going to run this compound in by hand, and it's going to cut that taper on the end of this. Now, I'm just starting with a half a degree just to see where it's going to end up, and if I need to return it and add more crown to it, then I'll do that. Uh, but I believe that it doesn't take very much to, to help out with this tracking, so... I'm going to shoot for this. I'm not going to shoot the turning because I'm holding the camera in the hand. I need both hands to work. And then after I turn it, I will see what happens. Okay, well I've made some major progress. Uh, I turned the front wheel with the taper on it, the idler wheel. 
and I put it back together with the rear wheel, the driving wheel just being a flat turn and I still had a lot of issues trying to track the belt. So what I did was take the back wheel off and I went ahead and cut a taper on it, same as I did the front. Uh, one third of each side of the wheel, a half a degree from the inside out. And now this thing is nice, it tracks, it sounds good, the vibrations are all but gone. That clacking sound is a thing of the past. The only other thing that I did mention earlier was this was really difficult to turn, this thumb wheel here and they must have turned these threads with a rock because they had burrs all over them they were nasty they didn't want to thread in and out of here even without the spring intact so what I did is I just took a, a metric die and ran on this thumb wheel ran and chased the threads to clean those up and knock the burrs off as well as uh, there's some kind of wasp in here with me as well as ran a tap through the hole here where it goes through so I can turn this it's tight but I can turn it nowhere near almost needing pliers before so I'm going to turn this thing on and I'm going to reposition myself and I'm going to let you hear what it sounds like you're going to hear a little bit of a tick occasionally and that is the scarf joint here where the belts actually tape together uh, as it spins around it'll be clicking off the wheels uh, but aside from that, I'm going to get into the front and I'm going to reach back. Sorry about the camera, and I'm going to turn this on and we're just going to listen to it. So, hopefully, you can pick that up now how smooth this thing is running. I have very little vibration on it, unlike I did before. The shaft here, fuck my finger which is the one that was running in and out 3 16ths or so is now virtually still I'm going to try to get to the front here and reach up and show you how easy this thing is to adjust the tracking hopefully you can see the belt moving off to one side I don't want to run it into the cast but now you can see I've got the belt tracked off to one side I'm going to bring the wheel back in Center it up, and there we go, it's tracking. Starting to sound great, everything's looking alright. Belt running smooth. Now, another thing I may address later the factory belt under here does not, uh, it's not even round. Uh, it, it actually runs back and forth as you watch it go across the two pulleys and the pulleys are in line and I really examined that belt and where they put the belt together it's crooked so I may go with a thinner twist belt on this a link belt if you guys aren't familiar with those and you're running them uh, running standard V belts on your table saws and whatnot you know they're expensive but they last forever and they will take tons of vibration out of your tool so at this stage where I'm at is I'm going to go ahead and put the disc sander back on as well as the table but I am going to address that table to tighten it up because I'd mentioned that it was a little bit loose I'm going to attempt to tighten it up and I will explain how I did that here briefly okay well I have the table laying upside down on the table and I've removed the thumb screw to allow this particular rod here to be free and the issue that I have found was you know this is a cast table and there are two punch marks here on either side where this rod runs through and that is allowing you probably cannot see this but I can feel it that is allowing this rod to rock up and down and if you look at this maybe you can see the play there so what I'm going to attempt to do and I cannot cause any damage per se is to take a punch I'm going to remove this rod and I'm going to put the punch in the hole and I'm going to strike it to deepen 
where they have struck it originally and that should tighten up this rod to these holes that are bored through here now even if I go a little bit too far you can always come in here with a little half round file take a little bit of it off and find your happy medium so I am going to attempt that right now I will need two hands to do that and I will show the results shortly okay well as discussed I was going to use my center punch to punch on those indentions on the bottom of the table and it took maybe two or three strikes on each one of them and now this table I mean to tell you is tons better and rigid compared to what it used to be I mean I literally feel no movement in it so everything has been put back together everything's tightened up uh, with the exception of the backstop guard which I'd already indicated that I'm not going to be using and this thing now I have not used it however it appears to be a brand new machine tons better than the way it came out of the box so I hope this video helps some of you out uh, hopefully you can make yours run a little bit better if you are so equipped I would not hesitate to pick one up with the exception of the motor possibly being a little bit underpowered uh, now I don't believe I have any complaints on this machine like I said earlier the cost of these units are usually uh, directly reflected in the quality of control so if you spend a little bit of time with them and finish the job that should have been done right the first time you actually will benefit in a cost savings measure to get a decent piece of equipment so with that being said, I'm going to fire it up. Thanks for watching and good luck.